One of the most significant adjustments in China's worldwide strategy appears to be underway in one of Africa's smallest country. China is looking to create its first permanent military presence on the Atlantic Ocean, on the coast of Equatorial Guinea, according to a report based on classified U.S. intelligence. Unnamed U.S. officials are reported to have warned that Beijing plans to establish a permanent military installation in Equatorial Guinea. If true, the plan signifies a new chapter in China's Africa policy, beyond the obvious geopolitical challenges provided by China, having a naval facility on the Atlantic for the first time. According to expert, this has global geopolitical consequences when China succeed to set up the new base in West Africa. According to the Wall Street Journal, though officials did not describe China's plans in detail, they said China's presence on Africa's Atlantic coast would enhance the possible threat to the U.S. as it would give Chinese warships a place to rear men refit opposite the East Coast. Africa is, is, uh, is, has strategic importance in terms of its uh, resources. This strategic importance is growing and it is setting the continent up for competition among uh, Europe, America and China. I call it a second scramble for Africa. China is making heavy investments in basic infrastructure, ports, roads, railroads, that kind of thing. The question is, is the nature and the quality of the financing behind that infrastructure. What we're seeing is that the Chinese investments are somewhat burdensome to the Africans. China is not funding what it wants to fund. It is funding what Africans have asked to be funded. It is not about the debt burden. It is whether Africa is growing like other parts of the world. What I find troublesome in the debt burden debate is that it's only Africa that has a problem when it has debt. I, I look at the American debt to, to China and wonder why they are not subject of the debt burden fees. Africa is the biggest regional component of China's $1 trillion Belt and Road Initiative, with nearly 46 African nations that have signed into the initiative, which represents over 1 billion people and cover about 20 percent of the Earth's landmass. There are already over 10,000 Chinese companies in Africa, which according to a McKinsey report, generated $180 billion a year in revenues and could reach $250 billion by as early as 2025. Since 2000, millions of Chinese nationals have made Africa their permanent home as a result of the unlimited business prospects the continent provides them. As a result, China has firmly established its military and security system in Africa, generally without inciting international opposition. In 2017, China established its first military base in Africa, in Dorla Djibouti, located on the eastern part of the continent, straddling both the Indian Ocean and the strategic Suez Channel. This raised concern among U.S. military officials, who described the Chinese facility as being right outside their gates of the U.S. base at Camp Lemonier. Over the last few years, there has been several rumors about China negotiating to set up military bases in different locations in Africa. One such rumor is a naval base in Kenya, since China has developed a significant economic presence in the country over the last two decades. Beijing and Nairobi, however, have dismissed reports they are seeking to establish a Chinese naval base in Kenya, after a U.S. Defense Department report on Chinese military power recently suggested Beijing might be looking for bases in various African countries, including Kenya. It comes as no surprise the new report about China being in the advanced stage of setting up a new base in Equatorial Guinea. The consolidation of Chinese military power on the continent in the form of such new base, combined with the expansion of Beijing's already considerable economic influence, would shift global power dynamics, eroding U.S. dominance and relegating Europe to the sidelines of international affairs. Equatorial Guinea is one of Africa's smallest countries, with a population of only 1.4 million people. The country has vast offshore oil reserves, making it the wealthiest country on the sub-Saharan continent in terms of per capita GDP. According to the Human Development Index, American oil companies discovered and extracted the majority of Equatorial Guinea's oil reserves, making both the country's ruling family, the Nguimas, and U.S. companies wealthy, while less than half of the country's population have access to clean drinking water.
In spite of the fact that the report claimed China major ambitions in West Africa setting up a military base, Ionis Kaskinas, a senior fellow at the International Security Program of New America, sees a longer history behind China's move. Beijing is expected to develop the base in Bata, the country's largest city, according to U.S. intelligence. As Kaskinas pointed out, while U.S. oil companies have conducted most of Equatorial Guinea's oil exploration and production, China has become the country's primary development partner. In 2006, the China Exim Bank and the government of Equatorial Guinea signed a $2 billion oil-backed buyer's credit facility agreement for the development of the port of Bata as a modern deep-sea port facility which was eventually inaugurated in 2019. The country's elite are plagued in corruption allegations, and Transparency International's annual index currently ranks Equatorial Guinea as the fourth most corrupt country in Africa. The president's son and likely successor, Vice President Theodore Ongimo Biang Meng, has recently been convicted of embezzlement in France. The British government has frozen his assets and barred him from entering the United Kingdom. Coupled with the issues of frozen assets and corruption among the political elites, declining revenues due to mismanagement, and periods of slumping oil prices meant that Equatorial Guinea was becoming increasingly indebted to China. In 2020, Beijing became the country's main partner in combating the COVID-19 pandemic, donating 100,000 Sinopharm vaccines and then selling an additional 500,000 vaccines to the Abyang government. It is estimated that Equatorial Guinea's debt to China amounted to an estimated 49.7% of the country's GDP. According to reports, although the American government approached to Equatorial Guinea at the last minute, with a visit by the U.S. Principal Deputy National Security Advisor to discuss maritime security, it appears the ruling government of the country seems to be going through with preparations to host a Chinese naval facility. Other are speculation that Western and U.S. pressure on the country's ruling government might be pushing the West African country to move toward China, which has invested in the country extensively in recent years, developing at least 10 different projects ranging from building a deep water port to training and arming the country's security forces. Rather than building military bases and outposts in Africa, the focus should be on developing human you know, security capabilities, trying to ensure that African leaders um, are not propped up, are not encouraged to, to, to steal um, the, the, the state's resources and, and, and take them to Europe and, and, and North America. At the end of the day, the world benefits when Africa is stronger and better. Bring big money, build big roads, so that we pull those who cannot pull themselves out of poverty. The development of large-scale commercial infrastructure demonstrates strategic intent, and the extension of China's military footprint across Africa as a result of the Belt and Road Initiative is not surprising. The synergy between the expanding number of Chinese commercial firms across Africa and the spread of China's new security arrangements across the continent has resulted from Beijing's deft intertwining of economic soft power and hard power. Though economics has long been the driving force behind this military economic development complex, the dynamics appear to be shifting. The deepening of Beijing's ties with Equatorial Guinea is the latest illustration of the Asian giant's push throughout Africa, where it has built hundreds of commercial ports in recent decades. According to a Pentagon report to Congress last year, China likely considered adding African military outposts in nations such as Kenya, Seychelles, Tanzania, and Angola. This comes as no surprise, since in recent years, China has stepped up its engagement with the island nations of Seychelles, Comoros, Mauritius and Madagascar, any one of which could prove pivotal to a future Chinese Indian Ocean naval fleet one day.
If you enjoyed this video and want more definitive information about exciting trends in Africa, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our new channel, The New Africa Daily, your ultimate guide to staying informed on the latest in trending topics, facts, politics and more in Africa, within minutes.